Do your hives flare after a cold drink, a pet cuddle, or a healthy snack and fade before you can trace the trigger? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. Today we're focusing on the root causes of hives, how oxalates can quietly amplify your symptoms, and the specific article-based steps you can use to reduce reactions. I'm Alara Skye. We'll explain how mast cells drive those itchy welts, why certain everyday exposures keep setting you off, and how targeted nutrition and simple practices, from calcium timing to citrate intake, can help you regain control without guesswork. Hives, or urticaria, occur when mast cells and basophils release histamine, along with prostaglandins, leukotrienes, cytokines, and chemokines. Histamine binds to receptors on blood vessels and sensory nerves, increases vascular permeability, recruits inflammatory cells, and leaves you with raised, itchy welts that commonly blanch to white at the center when pressed. Prevalence skews higher in women, and children are affected as well. If you're uncertain about the cause, standard evaluation includes allergy testing with small, controlled exposures to common allergens and blood work for specific antibodies, so you can match flare-ups to the right triggers and stop chasing false leads. Common triggers are broad. Medications frequently provoke hives. Pet dander clings to surfaces and fabrics and can set you off. Pressure from tight clothing or straps can spark a reaction. Stress increases histamine and can trigger flares during high-stakes events. Infections, viral, bacterial, or fungal, can precipitate episodes and sudden temperature changes, a hot shower, or an icy drink may do the same. Now to an overlooked driver, oxalates. Oxalic acid in foods binds minerals to form oxalate salts that may crystallize if you don't clear them efficiently. Because you can't remove oxalates from foods once present, Diet matters if you're sensitive. High oxalate culprits highlighted in the article include spinach, Swiss chard, beet greens, almonds, and peanut butter. A compelling case example described years of persistent rash that finally resolved with a strict low oxalate approach, plus a twice daily topical magnesium, potassium, and calcium citrate cream. Itch relief was rapid, lesions flattened markedly, and most nodules cleared within months. When high oxalate foods slipped back in, symptoms returned, then remitted again when restriction resumed. Here are the article's strategies to minimize oxalate complications. First, limit high oxalate foods to lower your total burden. Second, increase calcium intake, so calcium binds oxalate in your gut and exits in stool. Using dairy is appropriate here, and dairy fat like raw cheese or raw milk fits well. Third, Hydrate adequately to help flush oxalates and reduce stone risk. Moderate collagen if you notice sensitivity, since breakdown products can contribute to oxalate formation. That includes enjoying bone broth, but not overdoing it. Support gut health, the principle matters, and use citrate from lemons and oranges to reduce stone formation. Avoid high-dose ascorbic acid supplements that can convert to oxalate. Boiling high oxalate foods lowers their oxalate content, and topical calcium can help with suspected oxalate-related skin irritation. Beyond oxalates, keep a practical focus on exposures. Track and avoid your personal triggers. Clean pet areas to reduce dander. If a medication consistently correlates with hives, discuss options to address the underlying issue through natural means where appropriate. Manage stress so histamine surges don't stack on top of other triggers and push you into a flare. The article highlights several nutrients and phytochemicals with antihistamine or anti-inflammatory effects. Kamphorol from Whole Foods supports intestinal R, A, L, D, H2 activity, which promotes regulatory T cells that can tame allergic responses. Think of this as a food-based daily lever that helps reduce the tendency toward flare-ups over time. Vitamin C supports tissue repair, collagen synthesis, and immune function, and in studies, 300 to 500 milligrams per day enhanced histamine degradation and inhibited mast cell degranulation. You can emphasize citrus fruits and organic orange juice, sweet, 
to align intake with the article's guidance and keep sources squarely within your allowed food pattern. Curcumin, the active compound in turmeric, shows antihistamine and anti-inflammatory activity. In a documented hay fever case, 500 milligrams twice daily for two months produced marked symptom improvement and reduced medication needs. Curcumin fits cleanly with the article's recommendations and does not conflict with your food rules. Quercetin helps regulate histamine release from mast cells and basophils with supportive research in recent years. Stay with quercetin-rich fruits emphasized in the article, especially apple skins and dark cherries so you can leverage this compound without colliding with disallowed items. If you're still unsure whether what you're experiencing is urticaria or another condition, get a clear diagnosis. Controlled allergy testing and targeted blood work can confirm your triggers. Data-driven changes spare you from unnecessary restrictions and focus your effort where it delivers benefits. Let's translate this into a one-week plan. Log foods, exposures, time of onset, and duration for each flare. Remove obvious high oxalate items such as spinach, Swiss chard, beet greens, almonds, and peanut butter. Add calcium at meals using dairy fat like raw cheese or raw milk to bind oxalate and keep your hydration up so your urine stays light yellow. In the same week, emphasize vitamin C from citrus fruits and organic orange juice, sweet. Include quercetin-rich fruits like apple skins and dark cherries. Use curcumin as outlined in the article. Keep bone broth and other collagen sources moderate if you're oxalate sensitive. Use citrate from lemons and oranges and avoid high dose ascorbic acid supplements. Use these observations to refine your personal trigger list, then keep what works and drop what doesn't. When you track responses alongside precise dietary changes, you create a simple feedback loop that makes each week easier than the last. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.